Hi, my name is Ahmad Al Assad, and in this video, I'll do the build service in Team Foundation Server 2012 Express Part 2. And in this video, I'll be explaining the build server topologies. So, as I already mentioned, the agenda for this presentation is discussing different TFS build server topologies. So the first topology is where you have everything in one server. You have TFS installed, you have the build controller, the build agents, ev everything exists on one server. This is usually good if you're trying, if you're just trying to try out TFS. Like, you just want to play around and see what it can do for you. If you have a very tiny team, yeah, that could work out. And you're not running continuous builds, or even if you're running continuous builds, it's just once in a while. You're not doing that many check-ins to your project. Because, um, like, when builds are running, the build agents consumes a lot of CPU. And they, like, the build agents need a lot of CPU power. And that will degrade the performance of TFS. So, if the, the team build is running and it's showing up all the CPU time... And you're trying to get latest, check in more, um, like change sets, or you're trying to do anything else with the build, with your uh, like uh, code repository, like you'll notice that it will be like really slow. Or even if you're just trying to query work items. The next topology I'll be explaining is where you have a dedicated build server on a separate machine or VM. In this picture, we see that the build controller exists on the TFS server. Now, if your build controller requires lots of memory, then you may want to move the build controller from the TFS server, maybe to the build server, or just put it on a third server. So again, we notice that we have a dedicated build server in this uh, picture or in this example. And in, in the picture, it shows that you have only two built agents. Of course, you may have one or more built agents, depending on the number of cores your CPU has, or your CPUs have, like just the total number of cores. The best practice is you you can have a built, serve, built agent per CPU core. The only disadvantage of this topology is you can only run builds for one team project collection. So, like in other words, if you have multiple team project collections, you can do builds for the other build co co uh, collections unless you uh, install uh, more build, like another build controller to talk to, to run builds for the, for the second team project you have, team project collection you have. Now, this topology is similar to the previous one. We only have one build, uh, one build controller, but we have two build servers or more than one build server. Um, of course, the disadvantage is still we, we can only run builds against one team project collection. But what's good about, uh, what's the major advantage of um, this topology? Like, let's say you have uh, different types of projects. You have projects that compile against, uh, like, like let's say the Windows 8 store projects, which require the Windows 8 operating system. So uh, in this case, you may want to have one of the build servers running Windows 8, while the other build server is running, just an example, Windows 7 or Windows Server 2008. Um, it could be not just the operating system, it could be just uh, specific uh, software requirements that need to be installed in one server. Uh, versus the other one. The other the other advantage of um, of such a topology is you can uh, like let's say you have like mul multiple servers, but they only have like let's two core CPU in each one. So now instead of purchasing like a really expensive server, uh, you can just reuse the ones you already have and you're not using. So you can achieve separation while reusing the hardware that you already have that's not used by um, 
by by other uh, users in your organization by having multiple agents you, you you can dedicate specific agents to run specific build types like let's say you want to run the ci builds continuous integration builds and the gated builds on a really powerful powerful server so those builds complete as soon as possible so uh, your developers can tell if the build is successful or not, or the check-in, um, the code that got checked in is built successful or not. So you can dedicate one of the servers to, um, which let's say it's a powerful self server, to run the CI build, while the other agents on the other server will run the scheduled builds, and let's say those builds will run off uh, off hours or at night. On this topology, we have multiple controllers and multiple build servers. But what we're showing here in this diagram that you have multiple controllers, but they're still targeting the same uh, team project collection. The only time you'll need multiple controllers um, for one team project collection, if your controller is consuming a lot of memory and you you don't want to, um, to consume all the the resources for that machine. So you want to to distribute um, your build controls or have multiple build controls so they can so the memory consumption is distributed between two servers or more servers. Actually, there's another time where you want. Um, that you may need multiple controllers. So let's say you have external assemblies that you want to use. That let's say there are libraries from, um, let's say custom controls, and those are, uh, and you want to reference those libraries in your team build. So the team controller will, um, you you will assign that path, direct that directory path, in your um, a code repository in the build controller. So if you have multiple uh, folders and you want to use um, like one folder per build, because you can only assign one folder, one path for the for each build controller. So if you have different paths that you want to use, so you can have multiple build controllers and for each build controller you can assign a different path the idea like 90 percent of the times you will have another team project collection and and you will have a controller that's targeting um a team project collection so instead of having like this line here you'll have a team project collection so you'll have a build controller targeting one build collection and so you'll have this server will be building the, the team project collection uh, B code while this controller and this build server or at least these two build agents will be uh, building um, the code for the team project collection A. So this server with two, two, two build agents and B3 and B4 will be building a uh, code for application tier B. Now the final topology here is where you have um, like basically a server for for your team server, team foundation server where your code repository is and your application tier. And you'll have a, a server for each build controller here and here like controller A and controller B, and you'll have a build server. You may have multiple build servers for each build controller. And the advantage of this is you get basically the maximum control and isolation between um, team project, like builds for team project collections. So let's say you want dedicated servers and controllers to build a code for specific team build collection because it contains a certain code that you don't want to share with other uh, team members 
and um, so in this case this this topology will be ideal because all the code that will be compiled let's say for uh, project collection a will be handled in this side so if you have any proprietary code that you to compile like it will not be mixed with with the other uh, servers or the other code and also the build controllers because each one of them is an, on a dedicated server so they can have their own resources that they don't share with any uh, like build agents or team foundation server one of the things that i i forgot to mention in this presentation is uh but i actually mentioned in the previous one that you can only install one build controller per machine so you can't have multiple build controllers on one machine so for example i can't have here a uh, build controller c um at least out of the box we there is a hack to do so but it's not supported by uh, by Microsoft and uh, those lines there they're just connecting the controller to the build agents there is no connection or direct connection between the build agents themselves so it's controller uh, to agents and uh, what happened here is basically when you queue a build uh, depending on your uh, build definition the, um, and also which project it is that uh, the build controller will get notified that there is a request for a build um, and it will know what type of build and by executing the build definition uh, it will assign the build to one of the agents um, either just the free agents if there is no specific settings to um, to specify which agents uh, which agent should build that type uh, or if there's a specific um, agent to build that type then it will be assigned to that agent so in this video we learned about the different topologies uh, for the uh, build uh, uh, service in, T in team foundation server 2012 uh, whether it's the express or the full edition like um, I explained the explanation was for both of them um, just because when I install the build servers on, um, on the next videos, I'll be using the Team Foundation Server Express Edition. Now, if you have any questions or um, if you want me to record this, uh, like a video on a specific topic, feel free to contact me in my email address, which you can see on the screen. Or you can visit my blog and uh, take a look at other articles that I wrote or the vid other videos I um, I recorded. You can also follow me on Twitter. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.